Hi, I am Germán Sevier, resident of cardiology at Hospital Universitari Juan 23 in Tarragona, Spain. I have the honor to introduce you to our original article entitled Outcomes with Type 2 Myocardial Infarction Compared with Non-Ischemic Myocardial Injury. Nowadays, the clinical reports referring to Type 2 Myocardial Infarction are heterogeneous and do not allow to precisely delineate the mechanisms and prognosis of this disease. Also, there is a group of patients with elevated levels of troponin that do not fulfill the diagnostic criteria of type 1 or type 2 myocardial infarction. These patients are discharged with a variety of clinical diagnoses and their prognosis is not well established. As we know that the presence of high troponin levels is associated with a worse prognosis, it is therefore conceivable that the outcome of these patients with high troponin levels but without typical symptoms of myocardial ischemia will not be better than the outcome of patients with type 2 myocardial infarction. The aim of our study was to compare the two-year-old cause mortality and readmission rates for acute coronary syndrome and heart failure between patients with type 2 myocardial infarction and patients with non-ischemic myocardial injury. Since the prognosis of patients with type 1 myocardial infarction is well established, this population is included in this study as a reference group. The study included all patients who were admitted at the emergency department of the University Hospital in 2012 and 2013 and with at least one troponin test. Participants were classified into three groups, type 1 myocardial infarction, type 2 myocardial infarction, and non-ischemic myocardial injury if patients didn't meet the diagnostic criteria for type 1 or type 2 myocardial infarction. These patients were assigned to this category because we believe that the myocardial injury didn't result from a specific ischemic phenomenon, but rather from systemic processes leading to the death of cardiomyocytes. Patients with type 2 myocardial infarction and non-ischemic myocardial injury were found to be older and to have higher comorbidities than patients with type 1 myocardial infarction. They also presented with greater deterioration in renal function, lower levels of hemoglobin, and higher rates of atrial fibrillation. Between patients with type 2 myocardial infarction and non-ischemic myocardial injury, no differences were found in terms of age, proportion of men, or medical history, being the risk profile similar for both groups. During follow-up, 39% of patients with type 2 myocardial infarction and 40% of patients with non-ischemic myocardial injury died, in contrast to 19% of patients with type 1 myocardial infarction. Using the Cox proportional hazard regression model, the risk of mortality in patients with type 2 myocardial infarction and non-ischemic myocardial injury was higher than that in patients with type 1 myocardial infarction. Readmission rates for heart failure were higher in patients with type 2 myocardial infarction and non-ischemic myocardial injury, although not statistically significant. And finally, readmission rates for acute coronary syndrome were significantly lower in patients with type 2 myocardial infarction and non-ischemic myocardial injury compared with patients with type 1 myocardial infarction. This study reveals that patients admitted with high troponin levels but free of ischemia-related symptoms have a two-year mortality risk comparable to patients with type 2 myocardial infarction. Thus, a population of high-risk patients with abnormal troponin levels fails to be included in the universal definition of myocardial infarction. Moreover, patients with type 1 myocardial infarction are treated with medications and invasive procedures that have been shown to increase survival in various clinical trials. However, the distinction between type 2 myocardial infarction and non-ischemic myocardial injury has not led to the development of rigorously tested therapeutic strategies or procedures aimed at improving their mid-term or short-term prognosis. For this reason, we believe that the review of the current nomenclature of myocardial infarction is essential to ensuring the homogeneity of clinical studies and thus a thoughtful understanding of this clinical entity.